Good morning, everyone. Afternoon, night, whatever it is. Um, I am Justin Donaldson, and we are painting Japan. So we're going on a little digital trip all the way through Japan. At the moment, we're actually near the south of Japan in uh, Onoyama Shrine, near a place near a little island in Tanakashima. Um, I am uh, looking forward to finishing this up today. We started last week, and here we are. Let's have a look. Uh, feel free to let me know if you guys uh, can hear me, can see me, if you guys need anything. But in the meantime, let's paint, let's chat. So, let's see. So this is where we left it off last time. There's a bunch of stuff going on. Mills, thank you, thank you for hosting. Yo, how are you doing? So yeah, we're gonna finish this painting today. We're really gonna start getting into um, details. Last week was really just like putting paint down, blocking things out. Um, and this week is gonna be details. And I have one structural thing I wanna change. There's this rooftop actually here up the top here. It doesn't make sense. I need to cut, I need to chop it. There's too much going on. Yeah, so let's get started with that. Those big structural changes first. Here, and as we're here, feel free to uh, ask questions. Let me know thoughts. What have you guys been up to? All right, so we're gonna cut in to this, actually on the on the reference that we can see there there's not actually a lot going on back here and I know I was kind of rushing last time so I, I kind of put a little too much in there but that's okay nothing we can't fix right here, I gotta, gotta, wet my, gotta wet my paints make sure they actually work Cub how's it going welcome welcome Mel says, I'm excited to see you finish this. I am excited to finish it. I'm excited. I didn't know. I was almost tempted to move on to the next one, but it's so it's so close, but it's not quite there. Like I can't quite call it finished in my head. So here we are. Here we are. Alright, so that's good. I've kind of cut back into there. I'm gonna need to. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Kind of need to sit down and, and sit back, try and figure out the places that I've kind of rushed and missed things. And I think one of those places is um, here. This this perspective line actually needs to come come out across here. So I'm going to come. Push forward. Cup says, all is going well. Happy to see you streaming. Look forward to it. Oh, good. I'm glad you look forward to it. I look forward to it, too. I was feeling a bit tired this morning. But I know part of making it work is just showing up. So here we are. All right, so we're cutting in, cutting across, making these structural changes now so that when we get into the details, I can be pretty confident that I can, you know, commit to my details. Okay, so that's good. Dylan, hello, how's it going? It's good to see you here. So you guys are more than welcome to ask any questions if you have any. Okay, yes, I see something else. Some more structural stuff. Dylan says, good, long time fan. Ha. Well, thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you. Lovely Fantasia does. says, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. It's good to see you here. Dylan says, hope you're doing well. I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing pretty well. 
I feel like I wasted a little bit of my morning, I suppose, but it's not all about being productive, is it? At least that's what I tell myself. No, it's been a it's been a good a good couple of weeks. Kind of just getting back into life after life after Christmas. It kind of sounds like life after death, but it is so far removed from that. No, Christmas was really fun. So we're sort of getting... We've got like Christmas and people's birthdays and all kind of busyness that all happens at once. Which is great, and we get to see a lot of people, but... There's something nice about just coming home and working. Umi, nice to see ya. I'm doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. You were here for this last one, weren't you? For this one. Yeah, so we are, we're gonna finish this one. Dylan says, I have no money. Well, Dylan, neither do I. I hear you. Boogie Dad says, hello. Sorry, I just probably butchered your name. I just got your work today. It's amazing. Deeply motivates me to dive into gouache. Hope I could stay tonight, but I have to go. I'll watch everything as soon as I can. Happy painting. Thank you, Buki. It is. It was good to see you for however brief that was. Cub says, I'm on a bus on the way home. I saw you went live. I had to check it out. You were on a bus on the way home last time, or maybe even the time before that. I suppose this is kind of the time that you're on a bus on the way home, huh? Where are you uh, coming home from? School? Work? Dylan says, is this gouache? This is gouache's close cousin called uh, poster color. Very, very, very similar. Um, works very similarly. And Buki says, I'm from France, so it's time to sleep before work tomorrow. Oh, go get that sleep. It is so important. Yes, I hear you. Okay, so at the moment I am throwing down throwing down some value. We're gonna see if we can get these darker spots darker. And I'm really mostly concerned about the spots where I want to draw your attention. So um, underneath underneath the the roof as it comes down, I want it to feel like there's really an overhang um, and feel like there's a lot of distance, right? Because there is, there is, and that shadow is going to help me do that. Plus, some of this, uh, some of the marks that I made, especially along here, ended up being rather ambiguous, so once I hopefully apply a little more kind of reasoned pattern in here it'll make a little more sense okay umi says i also recently started gouache after finding maddie which led me to well it led you to my instagram your work is so inspiring and depth too thank you yeah me uh I, I very much enjoy Maddie's work. Very much so. Lovely says, but it looks amazing. Oh, thank you. Dylan says, any advice on your approach to painting architecture in general? And Nindoras says, dude, dude, welcome Nindoras. It's good to see you again. Okay, um, any tips on painting? architecture in general um yeah i mean i think it's the same one of the same tips is painting you know a lot of things but is specifically uh you know valuable for painting architecture is to get the like the main base shapes down fast so like this is a shrine it's a cube it's a it's a you know there's lots of rectangles so if i can get that cube leanness then everything else kind of falls into place. If I miss my cubeliness, I never, I never thought I'd be using the word cubeliness actually. Uh, but if I can get that down, then everything else is right. If I, if I miss it, if I mess it up, then everything else tumbles and nothing else quite works. So that's my, 
that's my quick rant for kind of what is most important in architecture. It's like if you can get the base shapes, those core shapes down, then everything else falls into place. Dylan says, right, thanks for taking some, oh yeah, no worries. That's what I'm here for, Dylan. That's what I'm here for. Okay. So, oh, by the way, let me know if any of these cameras start working. They have a habit of maybe switching off or freezing in the middle. So give me a shout if that ever happens. Bernice says, hi, I'm happy. I watched one of your videos earlier to motivate me in my work. Just left for a lesson and when I come back, there's a live. There we go. What uh, What were you watching? I don't, I don't. Uh, Dylan says, and is this hot press TMK pond? Uh, I would love to work on some TMK paper. I've never tried it. This is in fact um, my second to last page in my etch a sketchbook. It is hot press. It is hot press. Uh, it's very nice. Cobb says, how does your style with painting environments differ from painting people? That's a good question. And I don't really know how to answer it. Um, I paint a flaming galah, g'day. Um, I think I think I what I need to watch out when I'm painting people is that I don't try and get too technical with it, because I always try and you know I want to make sure that the proportions are right. But sometimes I think I mess up the overall gestures, which is funny because gesture is something that I focus on so strongly with my environment painting. So, I don't know. Nidora says, and to pay attention to details after the main shape is done, always struggle with the details. Yeah, I find... Well, today is all about details, I suppose, so once we get some, some of this main stuff down, it'll be all, all details. It is hard. It's hard to determine where where your attention should be. I, I, I find I try to get rid of some detail. Like I try not to do all the details. Or I try to be very intentional about wh where my details go. I think that's it. Not that I don't like them or don't use them, but I just want to be very intentional about where they are. Dylan says, oh, excellent. Excellent. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. More thinking about this. What else do we need? Um, here we go. I want to... Okay, what do I want to do? That's always the question. What do I want to do? What do I what do I do to not waste my time? Okay, we'll get back to up here. I stopped up here because it was it was a bit wet and I need to dry because I'm doing some big layering here. Um There's a whole little beam that I just never put in. So let's go ahead and put that one in. We'll just tap it in. Tap tap tap. Down. I want to imply a shadow in there. Oh, Bernice says, I was watching Yakushima Island 3. I'm working on a, st working on a storyboard. That's cool. What to, What's the storyboard for? Is that what you do? Storyboarding? Because that's pretty cool. You'll know all about gesture then. Cub says, how do you know when a painting is finished? That's a very good question. A painting is finished. I suppose the first thing about knowing when a painting is finished is looking at it and not seeing 
something terribly wrong. Um, Dylan, I'll, I'll get I'll get back to more of that question later. Dylan says, "How do you up, no, do you upload the streams afterwards?" Yes. So YouTube keeps the streams. Twitch will keep the streams for I think two or three weeks, um, and I'll normally download the streams as well, so I have them. Yumi says, "How much time do you usually spend on a piece?" Like, did you actually work on this one off stream? I didn't work on this one off stream. Um, that depends on what the piece is for. I normally spend. Um, oh gosh, there is no normal anymore. Anywhere between forty-five minutes and twenty hours on a piece. But I'm doing a lot less of the twenty-hour pieces now that I'm kind of doing my own work and not not trying to fit the style of other people. Um, but let's get back to that other. How do I know when a painting is finished? Oh, Zellrig, hello. Um, yes. Yeah, so the first thing is that is that it, like my gut tells me that there's nothing wrong with it, and by that I just mean like if I'm painting a person, um, I I'll know when the person is deformed, and if the person's no longer deformed, then then we're good at least on that front. Um, and if if like the architecture's right, if if nothing screams like it's unnatural, then that that portion of it is satisfied. The other part of knowing when something is finished is uh, normally trying to begin with an idea about what it is that I'm after. I'm normally after something uh, relatively along the lines of kind of an emotional feeling. And so if I have that, like this one, I want it to feel peaceful. Um, and so I'm, I'm painting something that feels peaceful. And if it doesn't feel peaceful, then I'm not finished with it. And if it feels peaceful, regardless of where everything else is at, then I've succeeded in doing what it is that I'm trying to do, and thus it's finished. But I think the point is, if you don't have a goal, and if, you're, if your only aim is to make something perfect, then you'll never actually get there. Uh, but if, you're, if, you're, if you have a goal, and most of my goals are emotional, um, then once I reach that emotional state and once it communicates that, then then we're there. We're done. Um, Shy Cactus. That's a cool name. Shy Cactus says, do you paint in one art book? Um, I normally have an art book for certain kinds of things. Like I really need to get a, a set art book for this, this series of paintings. Um, so I, I essentially have a, I normally have one art book of like me going out and painting in the wild, and then um, I have lots of loose sheets of paper for other stuff. Meredith says, "So it's really about how you feel about it, exactly. It's all about how I feel about it." Heels only says, "Hello, hello, heels only. How are you doing today?" We are back again with this piece, and we're we're in it for the in it for the details today. Shy Cactus says, "What environments are most enjoyable to paint?" Um, so almost continuing the conversation we we're just having before, like um, for me, I get a lot of value from things that are um, things that are peaceful. So environments that are peaceful are really valuable to me to paint. Um, and a lot of the times that comes through like, comes through, not enough plants and rocks, places that I go that make me feel peaceful. Yeah. So I like I do like painting buildings, but um, a lot of the times it has to kind of meet some certain requirements to get that feeling involved. Hills only says I'm doing well. How are you? I am doing pretty good, I think. I think I never quite know, but I'm doing. I think I'm doing pretty well. Okay. 
Zorik says, peaceful? Do you never to weird contemporary art? Though, <laughs> um, never do weird contemporary art. I could do weird peaceful contemporary art. Dylan says, do you sketch prior to painting or do you just go for it? Uh, normally I just go for it. I did actually do some sketches of this building before I started to kind of make sure my head was wrapped around what the architecture was doing. But then I just went for it. Sorry, he says that's true. I hope I actually understood what you were saying, Zorig. I hope so. All right, all right. I, I see some things we need to do. At this stage, painting tends to get a little uh, shotgun, like I'm trying to get everything to a certain point and then I realize that this over here needs it and this over there needs it and so it's a little bit back and forth. Dylan says, amazing, I feel like painting architecture in perspective must be so difficult. Um, it's kind of like, it's kind of about learning. I was, I was thinking and writing something uh, the other day about um, starting things, about like all of the, the micro skills involved in something like painting. And it always feels so overwhelming because there's like 10, 20, 30 different things you need to be thinking about all the time. Um, and like you're saying, you're, you're, you're thinking about doing the architecture and painting and doing it all at once. And it's a very intimidating idea. Like it must be tremendously difficult, but it's like, if you haven't put the time in or you haven't been had the opportunity to learn how to do architecture, then like, of course that's, that's terribly difficult. And it's like, you know, my kids learning to read, they have to think about the letters and they have to think about the sounds and then they have to think about saying them all quickly enough to get to understand what word it's trying to produce. Like it's a chore for them. And the idea of like writing an argument would be like terrible. But you get to the point where you've you've like paid the price of of starting something of, of you know starting learning how to paint architecture. You've put in the hours and you've paid the price, and suddenly you don't have to think about that stuff anymore. And so you get two or three things together, like architecture and painting, and you can. It's possible to get to the point where you don't have to. You don't have. It's not as arduous. It's not as much of a task anymore. You can kind of just enjoy the process as you've gone from like a scientific pursuit into an intuitive pursuit. George says, not sure if this has been asked. Oh, there's a lot of stuff that people said. And I was talking for a while. Um, Dylan says, I'd have to sketch on the paper prior to applying paint. I get that. Zara says, everyone goes for like distorted bright stuff again. I don't like it either though. George says, not sure if it's been asked, but is there a difference between the Nicker poster colors you use in gouache? I've used gouache for years, but haven't tried the Nicker poster colors yet. I think there's some technical diff differences, uh, but it's not, it's not like, if you like gouache, you will like this and you might not feel much of a difference. If you don't like gouache, you won't like this. Like they're close enough that yeah, you're not really missing out if you're not using it. For me, it it rewets, it you know reactivates a little better than gouache, and because I do a bunch of plain air stuff, that's really important to me. Um, Dylan says, right, so putting in the time, of course, yeah, unfortunately. But you know, I would just I th I think part of what I was thinking was like it doesn't you don't have to feel guilty about not being able to do it. You don't have to feel guilty about having to learn how to do everything all at once. In fact, it's kind of better just to to kind of start, you know, just do them all one at a time and but really get into them. Really build them up to a point where it's intuition now. 
Lovely says, same, never been a fan of drawing the building, but I should try to learn the basics. Quick ones to draw. Dylan says, it's funny because designing and sketching digitally is such a luxury, comparatively. <laughs> Outrow says, are you streaming using an iPhone? This that you're watching there is an iPhone. And I have another one up there, right there. Um, so yeah, I am, I am. One day I might get some real cameras and I know they'll look nicer, but for now, these do the trick. At Rawa says, any special software I need to stream via iPhone? Well, actually, I'm streaming via my computer. I just have my iPhone going to my computer, and I use uh, X Mirage to do that. Dylan says, honestly, the picture quality is perfect. Oh, thanks, Dylan. I'm glad to hear it. All right, so I'm going to try and get my head back into structural, get these things in and down. So. What do we got going on? We have these. Uh, is Mirage available for, for PC? It is. It's actually called X Mirage. Okay, so we've got kind of these little grates. Can we in here? Funny little things. CC the artist, welcome, says, okay, I'm really into background painting, just like you do, and I want to make it into career in the entertainment industry for movies and games. Do you have any advice for people who are into a more traditional 2D look, but going into an industry strongly dependent on 3D and photo bashing? Ooh, that's a big subject. Um, my opinion, and it's just an opinion, uh, but it ha it's it's formed from what has worked and what has not worked for me. Is that the best thing you can do is um, okay? So if you want to go into the industry, do, do you live in the states? That's a question. That's a relevant question. Um, if you live in the States and are kind of wanting to do background stuff, if you live in France, uh, I don't know much about how it all works in France, so I'm going to be less used to you there. But I can tell you that whatever little success I have, um, it's not because of any 3D that I did. Um, and the people who come to me don't come to me because I'm a generalist and I'm good at a bunch of different things. Uh, if you're into background painting, I would paint backgrounds. I know that sounds a little simplistic, but it's one of those things like rarely do companies go in for people who can do a little bit of everything. Like that's only really useful in an indie environment, and by uh, an indie like independent environment. And even still, most people when they're hiring someone want someone who can do a thing, and they want someone so that they can do a thing. Um, and so the people who contact me for work contact me because I do this very specific thing. That's the only way that I'm able to get work doing this very specific thing. So if you want to get work doing this very specific thing, then get really good at doing this very specific thing and be known for doing this very specific thing. I know that sounds simple and I know it's not simple. Dylan says, well, success varies for everyone. Absolutely. But if you're an inspiration to a lot of people. Oh, but I'm an oh, thank you. So thanks for working for streaming. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Okay. Let's... Okay. 
So we're doing a little grid here. This is where it gets into relatively boring work. Well, no, it's not boring. It's just a little mundane. Dots, dots, dots. Got to get them in, got to get them out. I'm happy to answer questions. We can talk while I'm doing endless dots. Um, Dylan says, very specific thing as in traditional background painting. Yes. Yes. But I, but I think I mean that more generally than just this. Um, you can kind of see... You can see the people who do this, even if they do it digitally uh, or traditionally or in different mediums. Honestly, for most people, it doesn't matter what medium you do it in. If you get this look... Um, then, and this is kind of true for everything. If you if you're able to consistently produce a look, and you do so, and people see it and people want it, then they'll hire you for that look. I found all the terrible jobs are when people want me, as in, oh, I'm just going to hire him because he's an artist, to do some other very specific thing that he doesn't like, isn't necessarily good at and then I spent all my time trying to emulate someone or something else and it takes two or three times as long <gasps> there's some emotions involved here um, the Fleming glasses have you thought about what other countries you might be visiting or painting after Japan oh I have thought about I've thought about doing Ireland for something a little different because Ireland is beautiful Don says right makes sense so I like fitting their criteria yeah doing work to fit other people's criteria is necessary I think it's a good skill to have but sure is a waste of my time and ultimately, I'm never going to be good. Like, if somebody wants me to paint a Craig Mullins painting, I'm never going to meet that standard. The only person who's going to meet that standard properly is Craig Mullins, so they may as well go hire him. And a lot of times, that's what they do. Fleming Glass has beautiful landscapes there too. I know. And like old ruins, old castles. It's exactly what I'm gonna be painting. Okay, let's see. Got this like little white border that's painted around. Let's see if we can do it. Dylan says, it's been great chatting with you. I'm going to make some coffee really quick. Yeah, go do it. You can make me some while you're at it. That'd be amazing. Yeah, thanks for chatting. It's been good to see you. I feel like a kindergartner. Gotta make sure I draw in the lines. Especially when I fail to draw in between the lines. It's so funny, everyone always says, oh, you're an artist. Well, I couldn't even draw a circle or a stick figure. And you're like, well, neither can I. But I'm not gonna tell you that. All right, so that's good. There's some little blue things on here. I don't think I actually want to paint those. I ain't gonna do it. But I'm gonna add some more definition to some of this. 
this stuff here. Underneath the doorway. Alright, so what else is there? Okay, I want to indicate some floorboards down here. I also kind of want to put some more color into a lot of these woods. So I'm going to put like a... I'm going to work a little more transparently over the top. See if I can kind of just get some light Chroma to sit on top. CC says, okay, I see. I'm trying to find studios in Europe and Canada. I find that I might be able to work at based on their specific style and interests. It's not easy to find. I want it to help with my portfolio building to have some sort of guidance. Thank you for your input. It does help, even if it seems simplistic to you. I am more than happy to help. It's, it's, it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it for sure. It's never easy. Um. So I'm trying to get a bit more color into this wood. Dylan says, oh gosh, I forgot it was 2020. I feel old. Oh my. I forgot it was 2022, but I don't mind feeling old. Somehow I don't feel old. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've ever felt old in my life. I think that might be my undoing. Okay. Okay, this is good. Dylan says, how old are you? Take a guess. Take a guess, how old do you think I am? Feel free for everyone to join in. either 11 or 89 could be could be 23 33 I'm not changing how old I am I'm actually just calling out the names numbers 11 or 89 yeah um, Flynn and Galal said I'm 11 no 89 So I am almost 30. Almost. Covering your bases, yeah. You're almost right somewhere along the lines if you just keep calling out numbers. And then when I say my age, you just say, ah, I knew it. I told you. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. When I'm uh, 29, when's my birthday? Uh, the 4th of April. It is in April. Alright. 
nearly there. Yeah, f full pro in game of speech. Exactly. Oh, here we go. Throw down. What's my star sign? Uh, I don't know. I think. Honestly, my star sign's not that I keep track of. Not that you need to keep track of it, you just learn it once. I think I'm an Aries. Not that I subscribe to thinking that means anything in particular about me. That you're welcome to prove me wrong. What's my mother's maiden name? Um, I'm not sure I'm gonna I'm not sure I'm just gonna hand that one out. What's my Chinese zodiac sign? I'd love to know that. I don't know. I think it was like Year of the Monkey or something. All right. So I'm gonna put in some of these a little more of this depth down here authentic oh, face says looks beautiful thank you thank you thank you and thank you for joining us today in there. There we go. Um, yeah, I'm going to put some super faint lines in down here to indicate some degree of like floorboards. Oh, came here from Bat Rat Disc, the Bat Rat Discord? What is the Bat Rat Discord? I don't know if that's a typo or just something that um, never thought to do your favorite mythical creatures. Um, I don't have a great deal of favorite mythical creatures. The Church of Bat of the Bat Art. I think I'm getting more confused as we go. I don't know why it's called like that. Can you tell us about the bat app discord? Because I'm a little lost. But I'm going to just keep painting. Um, what else? Yeah, I was just uh, sitting here about to give out my social security. That's all we were talking about. Nothing serious. Someone linked my stream. Cool. Ah, oh, from Max. Yeah, cool. Max is a nice guy. Uh, do you not paint any animals in your peaceful scenes? So they remain quiet. That's a really, that's a really good thought. Um, mostly, I've just been in this place where I am uh, focusing on um, just focusing on getting getting this stuff down, getting my sceneries to communicate without anything else in it. Sorry for the confusion. Oh no, it's it's all good. Um, so for a while, I, I, rel I relied. I feel like a little too heavily on uh, people and actually mostly just people to communicate things in my paintings. And had some friends 
tell me that I really didn't need to do that. So, yeah, I've been really focusing on getting my art to a point where I can say when I, what I want to say, and communicate what I want to say with just, just the scenes that I love painting. And I think eventually, when I'm ready for it, I'll bring people back in. I might even bring my favorite mythical animals back in. But I'm just going to let that transition be a natural one where it'll happen when it happens. And I think I'll know when I'm ready for or come up with an idea that I think I just really need to paint people and animals into. It'll happen. There you go, some magical side brushing. If I do if I do my brush completely on the side, a whole bunch of uh, like the paint won't come down like normal, it's gonna like just leave little bits every here and there. And get some really nice textures. Lovely says, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Me too. What about you guys? What do you like painting? What's your What's your thing? Not that you need a thing. You know what? I'm gonna put some of that. I'm gonna do some of that texturing up on the up on the side over here too. I'm not gonna get carried away. I think I'm gonna get into some of these plants and stuff that are around that are around the building. Again, structural. Lovely says uh, my original characters. That's cool. Fleming glasses. In terms of painting or. I mean, yeah, in terms of painting. I mean, if you have other things, then I'm I'm all about chatting about them. But originally I meant about in terms of painting. All right. So let's, actually these stairs, I see something they need. They need a little more oomph to their dimensionality. Go. Ume says, since I just started gouache, I'm trying skies and clouds mainly. Cool. Cool. Now, skies and clouds seem simple. And I'm sure you're fully aware they're they're not. <laughs> yeah. I only say that because you say since I just started out. But in the end, it turns out. Hmm, Decent Radical says. Oh, I can't hear what you're saying. My Spotify is too loud. Well, that one's on you. <laughs> it's one of those things that goes along with the idea that uh, kind of the the better you are as an artist, the more simple you can make things. And and people normally kind of take it the other way around. They think that simple things are easy. But simple things have nothing to distract you with. They're they're plain, they're simple. Everything's out in the open and every mistake that you make in a simple thing is there for everyone to see. Uh, the Flaming Glass has recently been painting secret shady green places. 
Oh, you know where my heart's at. Those secret shady places. So good. <laughs> Okay, so, 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 I want to, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think about what I want to do with this now, All right, so I've got a little more solidarity in some of this, but I'm just trying to think big picture, what does it need, it needs... that big white spots commanding my attention well I don't want to give it to you there we go we're just gonna do like a little bit of a little more detailing in these trees. See if we can get them to... I don't know, I just want to feel the wind in them a little bit more. Seeming as I want to feel the wind in them, or I want them to communicate that feeling, then that's what we need to work on. I'm actually going to just put like a little wet brush across. Not a great deal, just a little bit. In fact, I might let it, I might leave it for a sec. Dry a little bit more than that, but once I do that, I can make some strokes that are um, they just won't come out as uh, Super defined. I think I need that. Cece says, I'm really into horror and mysterious kind of atmosphere in painting. You know, like Caspar David Frederick, the romantic pa painter with a dark gothic twist. That sounds fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, I know a couple of artists who love that route. That's what I'm looking for. All right, so I kind of want to generally indicate some clumps, some big forms, but not go overboard. Cece says, ooh, can you share those artists who are into that type of art? Um, I'm going to double check this particular artist that you said. So I can make sure I'm actually talking about the right thing. Um, 
Yes, I can. Let's see. What is his name? I might have to share his name uh, a little bit later when I can remember it. But you, are you from Instagram or Twitter? Where do I need to share that information? I'm blanking on his name at the moment. And I don't want to spend too much time trying to figure out at the moment. Happy to spend the time trying to figure out later. I'll turn on the subtitles for Spotify so I can listen just. Oh, that's generous of you. Cece says, okay, I'm from, oh, you're, you're from Twitch. All right, I mean, well, if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, <laughs> um, I will, I don't know. And I can share it over there. Because I am totally blanking on his name at the moment. Because it's not an English name. I think it's, uh, Russian. Russian. <gasps> Decent Radical says the YouTube crowd is way cooler than the Twitch crowd anyway. Them fighting words. Fighting words. <laughs> the flaming. Um, I suppose I'm the only one who can see this little fight that's going on properly at the moment. The flaming glasses. Excuse you, but decent radical says. I mean, he can't see that. Over on YouTube. I suppose in the, in the end, this little fight only goes as far as I can let it go, right? Unless someone's sitting there on both platforms just to spite each other. Now I'm waiting for that to happen. <laughs> Nindora says, uh, they must be right. It all depends on the person who experiences it. Well, that's true. Fleming glasses. Come on, Twitch fellas, raise your pitchforks. We have a traitor. Cece says, Is that someone from our decade or someone considered a master? Oh, Nindora says, I only interact when there are none, not thousands of comments zooming by the chat anyway. Decent Radical says, yeah, there's not a whole lot of room for escalation in this conflict. Funny. Okay, so that kind of looks really nice over there. Could get a little bit more on this main tree. Because if anything, this main tree is where the party's supposed to be. Um. Though I would say, in this little platform fight, the winner goes to my Patreon users. Dang, yeah, I went there. Whoa.
Whoop. You know I love you all. All right. Endorses ha nice. Okay, you know what? I suppose trees have branches. Maybe I could put some branches in here. Get a little more sense. Maybe, maybe not. I mean I can certainly get away with not having branches. I'm gonna do some really light ones. Flim glasses, well I'm not one to be outdone, but goes to Patreon. Oh, that would be way too kind. bit silly at the moment not using a reference for this Mary says branches are overrated they're covered with flowers what I like about the branches with the idea of putting branches in here which I hope actually works out is that everything else is so vaporous. Everything else is just like paint melting into paint and just stuff everywhere. But having branches might end up like solidifying some of it. Giving that uh, contrast. I think it's working. I think it's working. kids waking up from their nap. I can hear little feet plodding everywhere. I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's cute. so well. I'm so happy with that. Okay. I'm not seeing any comments. It could just be because you guys aren't commenting. And that's, that's perfectly fine. I just remember one time I didn't see comments, but it was because I didn't see comments. And you guys are just chatting without me. I felt so left out. Yes, okay. Oh, I'm so happy with this. <laughs> Cintic Faye says, you can hear the kids here. Good. Lovely says, any musics to listen to? Oh, to like to listen while painting? Um, yeah, if I'm not streaming, I normally like to listen to a bunch of things. I, I like uh, some post-rock. Some, some like big music without words kind of helps me to get my head right the flaming glasses those trees are beautiful thank you thank you thank you I feel like somehow adding some of these branches in just I don't know exactly what effect it had but it was a good one and it was a, it, it was an emotional one I feel like it 
I can like connect more to this now. And I don't know, I have no idea why. Lovely Fantasia says, agreed. Oh, I don't know if the O was for what I said. Details, lots of details. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. Cynic said, I also like how you enhance the colors from the reference. Do you think about that before you start, or does it just happen? Uh, I definitely think about it. Like, the reference doesn't have that tree in 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 bloom and blossom. Um, and so that was definitely some choices. That's definitely something I thought about beforehand because I wanted to make it feel just a little more alive. Um, something like the red, like the red's not quite the same, but that's that's more about the reach of the, the paint that I have. I just don't have the right red to make it perfect, but it doesn't need to be perfect. Because if I were to look at this painting outside of knowing that there's a reference, it would just say, oh, it's red. like it, it wouldn't matter. No one would know, no one would care. And I'm at least a little bit enough aware of that that I can I can let go of trying to get exactly the right colors. And I can be more concerned about getting the right uh, relationships. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little more form to these bushes in the front. And I think once I've done that, like I think, I don't think I need much over in this corner here. I could probably do a little down here because this is awkward. This little little spot. So let's see. I think we're close to done guys. I think we're close. Got a bit more work I need to do today anyway. Um Syntic says I like that the roof is really Greenish in the painting. The photo is almost gray. Yeah, I wanted that like, uh, I don't know, like even in the photo, in the photo, if you look closely, when it's not right in the sun, there's a greenish tint to the majority of it. So I feel like it was green and then kind of weathered. And I'd, if, if I had more time, I'd put a little more weathering into it, but I really enjoy that green. Yeah, just like you're saying, there's it's a really nice quality to it, but for sure, I don't need to... All reference is merely a guide. So I'm picturing this here as a, almost like a cypress-ish kind of thing. Um, and in the, in the reference, you can't see it in this photo, but there's a row of cypresses along the edge that I liked because they were so distinct as trees. Whereas the stuff that we can see back there, I don't know what kind of tree that is. I know it's not, but the one that's directly behind almost looks like, the leaves almost look like a mango, mango bush that there is such thing as a mango bush. We used to have these man giant mango trees in the back of my um, backyard and friends' backyards back in Australia. We'd go and climb them and eat, eat the mangoes if the bats hadn't gotten to it first. Such good memories. We also had these big mulberry bushes well, but trees, really. Climb those and eat those that they stained so badly. You get some, like, dark blue almost by the time it hits the bottom. And then I'll come in and do some more articulating with how this side of things is in the light, but I'm not gonna worry about that at the moment. 
And Dora says, I have mango trees outside my house, bombarding my roof every day between November and January. You know what? I never quite had them so close to the house. Probably for that reason. I was a kid at the time when I lived there, so I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about it. But I was thinking about all of those around 2000 while the season lasts. Oh gosh. Definitely, if you don't harvest them and the uh, the bats come in, that's when it. That's what I remember. Just rotten mangoes, bat dung, delightful things. At the moment, I'm just trying to think about interesting, varied shapes. I say that I'm thinking about that, but I'm not thinking about that. I'm recognizing that I need to think about that as I do, like, the same little round bush everywhere. There we go. Dylan said... Uh, oh, no, Syndic before that. Syndic Face says, my mom has an apple tree in the garden. It's so much fallen fruit that you have to pick up. It must be crazy with the mangoes. The mangoes are so delicious, though. But what kind of brush is this? This is a calligraphy brush. I use it um, because you can get some really big, um, big washes like this, or really small detail like this. Uh, and it just actually has a really nice natural shape for for leaves. So it's nice to paint with the. Uh, For doing lots of plans. Dylan says, yeah, it looks like it holds a lot of water. Yes, it does. An endless supply. Which means that I have to work really hard to get it dry if ever I want to do dry brushing with it. So I rarely do dry brushing with it. You know what? I'm just, just going to take over here. Do that. Get a little darker. And a little warmer. And pull it in. And like this, you just like so it naturally splits, and so each one of those little sections can become, or in this became like little branches. I'm trying to get those little branches to come out, so it's more obvious to you. There you go. Dylan says that mint tone on the roofing is one of my favorite colors. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, that came out really satisfying. It looks so nice with that pinkish red. Yeah. When I try not to overplay this, but it doesn't seem to ever get overplayed. It seems to like just work every time. Is that with you know because green and red are these natural complementary colors. They always just play off of each other so well. And since I paint a lot of plants, I'm always fighting this fight of like, should every accent that I ever do be red? Because it works so well, but then suddenly everything I do is red. But you know what? I think I just need to not care about that. Does it work? Does it look good? Those are the questions. Fleming Glass says, the contrast with the teal and red is lovely. Thank you. 
I'm glad it's working out. Okay, so. So, so, so. We are coming to near the end of this thing. Though I kind of want... This straight line is bothering me. It is. It's bothering me. I don't think it needs to be there. I think it you know, commands too much attention. So... I'm going to put like maybe like a little... grass or something a little natural coming in here just breaking up this line breaking it up providing something a little more interesting in there anyway yeah that works well works well um, and then I'm gonna have a shadow coming in here I'm basically gonna use it like a like an arrow so I'm gonna do that little trick where we wet it all up again because I don't want these to be strong individual shapes and I don't want this shape to command my attention either. So here we go. Ended up having a little higher contrast than I was expecting, but you know what? I think as it dries, it might get better. It might lose some of its punch. It's always interesting to try and break away from the idea of what is there physically, like what are these objects? And then switch around to the question of like, what shapes, regardless, like let's not even think about what it is that's making up the shapes, but what shapes are gonna add to this? And then, and then how can I figure out what needs to make objectively as an object make up the shape? And see if we can problem solve that way. way too intense. We are almost there. I think I'm gonna head out pretty soon. Does anyone, anyone have any uh, questions? Any thoughts before we kind of do the final wrapping up? Well, if you haven't already, feel free to join my uh, Patreon. If you wanna learn more about painting, feel free to Download any of my tutorials. I'm trying to get trying to trying to get better at teaching teaching this stuff. Nindori says all this is entirely watercolor, or uh, this is poster color, poster color. So it's more like gouache. 
um, or you could call it a tr uh, an opaque watercolor. That's what it is. So it's like watercolor, but you're building layers and um, you don't see through the surface of the paint itself. Which means that um, the colors aren't as, how do you describe it? They're not as rich, they're not as deep, uh, but they are clearly still very strong uh, if, you, if you let them be, if you want them to be. So a, a little line that I want to make that I think will help. Nindora says, that was my first guess, but consistency threw me off. Uh, tell me more about that. What, what, what about the consistency? What, what were you expecting to see? In gouache that you didn't see. This sounds interesting. There we go. Yes, you can use other paint brushes as rulers or straight edges or whatever you call them in your country. Cynic faces, I never heard of those. Yeah, they're not actually all that super common. It's interesting. Lovely says, I started with watercolor. I started with oils myself. And I tried watercolor. Um, and I ended up feeling like I had to transition how I thought about painting, because you kind of got to do it Kind of got to do it backwards, you know? Nindora says it, it appeared more liquid than I expected. I used gouache, but never tried post color. Those are the same. And I'm more used to it feeling more heavy. Um, James Berg says, do you ha do any value studies before jumping into painting? Um, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so the consistency is all about how I want it to be. How I want it to be, um, and I can control that just in in how dry or wet I let the paint be. So these paints actually end up being even more liquid than this. But let's have a look. In here, they're basically like they're almost solid, and then I wet them all. And yeah, it's probably about how I use my water. Um, and at different times, it's different kinds of consistency. But yeah, James says, okay, do you make any value studies before jumping into a painting? Um, these days, not as much. These days, not as much. It is something that I have found very, very beneficial. Um, but I think, I think I've gotten to a point where I've trained my trained myself to see the values um, straight off the bat, which I know I, I, I that was so hard. I never. That's not an easy thing to just get up and do. You have to be very intentional about learning that. Um, Lovely says you want to cry at one moment. I don't quite know what you're talking about. You let me know what you what you mean by that. I'd love to hear more. Cece says, I recently tried oils for the first time. I absolutely loved it. Aren't they so good? Uh, Cub says, who are some of your biggest inspirations? Um, some of my biggest inspirations are... Two of them at the moment are Daniel Keyes and... Jeremy Lipking, probably always Jeremy Lipking. He is, I mean, if you look at his paintings, they're relatively different to mine, but I think they hit the same feeling. 
They hit the same feeling. Oh, lovely says, using watercolors. For wanting to cry at one moment. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes watercolors make me want to cry. No, actually, I, I enjoy a fair bit of watercolors, but I don't want to be sw sw uh, swapping out my how I think about it. And now I say that, but more recently I've been swapping back and forth between painting transparently and opaquely within the same painting, just with, um, just with these paints. So I think I think I could, could probably go back to it, but I'm not going to do that. Right here at the moment, I've I've really found a groove with with gouache and poster color. I'm really enjoying them at the moment. And I can use them like watercolors if I want, like I am right now. Oh, there's these like little textures down here. Yeah, I think while I'm in this detailing stage, I usually use the paint pretty thinly. And I feel like when I'm laying big stuff down at the earlier stage and just trying to just trying to get the, the page covered and get a lot of values in and down, um, then I'm then I'm more heavy with how I'm dealing with it. Alrighty, I think we're going to call it a day. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, yeah, okay, I should be here next Tuesday and we'll be moving on to moving on to the next place. So come join me. I'll see you guys then.